Tailwind CSS version 4 alpha release is finally out and I'm so excited to tell you all about. We get a new high performance engine called as Oxide which is 10 times faster than ES Build and guess what? ES Build is already really fast. You can also pay your respect and say goodbye to Tailwind config file as we no longer need it and keep watching to know what replaces it. And we are also walking away from what feels like a JavaScript library vibe to more pure CSS magic. So we will be uncovering all of this in this specific video. So let's dive. You can finally say goodbye to the Tailwind config file as the configuration for Tailwind has gotten so much simpler. So for example, if we want to get the latest Tailwind CSS alpha release, then you need to make sure you install these two packages, Tailwind CSS and Tailwind CSS slash Wheat. Now, obviously, please make sure that if you want to follow along, then install Wheat alongside whatever library you're comfortable with. Now, we will be using React as an example, but feel free to use whatever you like because Tailwind is compatible compatible with a bunch of them. So Wheat uses a plugin system. This means that if you want to plug and play any specific library, then you need to get the plugin for it. So in this case, what we are going to do is copy this code and install the Tailwind CSS plugin in Wheat config. Now, if we head over to our project that's already set up, we can head over to Wheat config file. And as you can see over here, we already have React configured. Similarly, we want to make sure that we get Tailwind configured as well. Now we are just going to add Tailwind CSS next to React in the plugins array. This means ta Tailwind is configured. In order for us to apply Tailwind, Tailwind CSS, make it available globally, we need to head over to the index.css file. This is a file that is the root file in the project. So here, all we need to do is use the import directive and then add Tailwind CSS. Now, this means that Tailwind CSS is available now for us to use. Let's compare this to a pre-alpha release of Tailwind. We had to install Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, Auto Prefixer, and these three different packages. Alongside that, we also had to initialize a Tailwind config, config file, which is includes all the configuration for our project and then lastly we also had to add these three directives add tailwind base add tailwind components and add tailwind utilities now this has definitely changed because all we had to do was import tailwind css which is a combination of importing base components and utilities that we just saw and that's it so you can already see how the setup is so much simpler and easier with less packages to install now we are really used to extending styles inside of tailwind config file in order for us to add any custom colors or spacing and specific themes in general for our application. So how do we achieve the same inside this specific project? Well, there is a way. Tailwind provides us with a theme directive, which allows us to extend existing design system. Now, if we head over to app.tsx, you can see that we have two things here. We have the Tailwind alpha h1 tag and the button. This is how it looks like. We have the Tailwind header and the counter, which just increments by one. If you want to take a look at all the spacing and colors for Tailwind, we can just say text and let's say pink. And then you can see all the different color swatches that are available for us. It goes from 100 to 950. Now, if I want to change this to 600, just to make sure our Tailwind is configured, then we can easily do that. So for example, you can see now Tailwind Alpha has changed its color. But let's say instead of 600, which Tailwind provides us, let's say we want to add text pink 951, or let's say we want to add a custom color altogether. So we can say, I want to add a neon pink color. Now, obviously, the neon pink color does not exist yet but in order for us to configure that what we could do is create that color over here so here we can say color neon pink and then whatever color we want i know the neon pink color so i'm gonna say 354 99 percent and 50 percent 324 now you can see that this special theme directive tells tailwind to make utilities and variants available to us based on the variables that we pass here and this is essentially a CSS variable. So if you're familiar with it, you can create variables inside of CSS using CSS variables. Now the theme directive is going to take a look at this specific CSS variable and based on the naming convention that we use, it's going to accordingly replace or extend. So now if we head over to app TSX, you can see neon is in fact this specific color. And if we head over to the app, you can see that the color has already been applied. So adding a new CSS variable inside of theme directive acts like the extend functionality previous versions. For example, in Tailwind config, if you had to add additional colors here, we would do extend colors and then extend the pink color or whatever color we want and then add those color accordingly. Now, this CSS variable inside of theme directory
attractive acts just like that now here we are adding a color a new color neon pink but let's say we want to extend the existing design system now you can see here if it says pink goes all the way to 950 i want to add a 951 color which is essentially going to be a neon pink color now in that case instead of saying neon pink we are going to say pink and then 951 this automatically tells tailwind that hey please extend the pink color to and add 951 to it now if i hover over it it has the same color that we just defined and if we head back you can see that tailwind alpha does have the neon pink color so nothing really changes let's say we want to add design tokens design tokens would be different colors different custom theming and spacing that we want for our app now how do we do that now the latest tailwind release how do we know what exactly to add here to extend the spacing or replace the spacing and so on well the way we can do that is by taking a look at the theme.css file to see all the different css variables that are exposed for us now there are different colors here breakpoints as we saw earlier different animations blurs and also spacing and there's so much more so if you want to extend or add any specific design tokens for your app i would highly recommend you to take a look at this specific file and see what you want to configure now let's say we have a spacing 3 underscore 5 which points to 0.875 rem let's say i want to add another spacing value called as 4.5 which maybe points to 0.05 rem for example so what we could do here to define our spacing scale what we could do here is we can just say hyphen hyphen spacing and then we can add 4 underscore 5 which which will be equivalent to 4.5 and then let's just say i'm gonna say 0.5 rem now this means we have another design token in the spacing scale that we can use so now we definitely need to make sure we only have two hyphens here but if we go back to app right now we don't have any spacing between the title and the button so let's give it some spacing here so we can say p 4.5 and 4.5 corresponds to 1.05 rem that we talked about and we just defined earlier let's save this and now you can see there is some spacing between the title and the button so this is how you can add custom spacing inside of tailwind as well now as much as we want to stick to the design system and stick to the spacing scale or the colors and all of that inside of our design system and use the design tokens that we do have sometimes we do have to come up with magic numbers depending on the number of elements that we have on the page and so on so having tailwind expose all of these values as CSS variables is really cool because now we can basically add custom code if we like. So for example, if let's say we want the gap between the head and the button to be a lot more, but don't want to just define a custom value, for example, of saying that, hey, I want the value to be 64 rem, which doesn't really exist. What we ra would rather do is we want the value to be maybe, six that means space 16 times 4. So luckily for us, because Tailwind now exposes our de design token values as CSS variables, we can perform a lot more cool things. Example here, instead of 4.5, if we want to multiply and use a CSS variable, we can easily do that. We could use the calc function. And here we can use a variable and we can use var and then reference the CSS CSS variable itself. So now in our case, we wanted to reference the space 16 value, the spacing 16 variable. So we could just use that directly and then multiply by four and then close this. Now, if this works as expected, Tailwind is going to create a custom utility for this and then we can use it. So now if we head over to our app, you can see that the gap between the header, like the, the H1 and the button is a lot more because we are multiplying it by four. We could do a lot more fun stuff like the example that I showed because of those CSS variables being exposed. You can also override a whole set of variables by using color hyphen asterisk initial which basically will override a whole set of variables by clearing the namespace with this specific syntax so now before you define any custom values you can write this as your first line you saw that if we look, look at pink it goes from 100 to 951 and 951 is the custom color let's see what happens now when we add this value color initial now this should wipe out all your previous colors and only make this specific one available to us so if if I look at pink, we only have pink 951. So IntelliSense is not even showing us any other colors because they have been completely wiped out. So you could do that as well. So you can just basically start from scratch and define your own colors. So those are the only colors that other developers can utilize. Now Tailwind definitely comes with a default theme that we can essentially customize. And we were doing that just now. But then let's say you don't care about that default theme at all. You just want to start from scratch. You don't want to worry about what Tailwind gives us. You definitely want to 
to use the Tailwind capabilities like the framework. We don't want to use any of the design system. So the way you can do that is by basically copying these two lines and importing pre-flight layer base and utilities layer base. And you don't even need any of this because you are basically starting from scratch. So what we could do is just get rid of this and paste it. Now we don't even need this line. And now still, if we go to app, we won't have any other colors available. We will only have the pink color. Similarly, if I say text gray, you will see that it's not even populating in IntelliSense. So this is how you can just wipe out what Tilman gives us and start from scratch if you want to define everything on your own. One of the biggest changes in this specific version of Tailwind Alpha release is its new high performance engine built on top of Rust. Now it's really fast, it's 10 times faster and they also claim that if you do a full build of Tailwind CSS website, it will be done in 105 milliseconds instead of 960 milliseconds. What's really cool to me is that they're using something called as Lightning CSS. Now Lightning CSS is a extremely fast CSS parser transform former bundler. Now, if you think of what Tailwind does behind the scenes is that we do get these utilities, we do get a bunch of design tokens and whatnot. But ultimately, to ship it to the browser, it's going to transform them, parse them and convert them into regular CSS code so that browsers can understand it. So Lightning CSS is a really fast package that you can essentially use. And again, it's it uses Rust. So it is over 100 times faster than other JavaScript. Now, if you have heard of ESBuild, then ESBuild build is already really fast, but Lightning CSS is faster. Lightning CSS build time takes 4.616 milliseconds and ES build takes almost more than four times, which is 17.2 milliseconds. Similarly, Lightning CSS is not only fast when it comes to building your CSS files, it also produce, produces a smaller output. Oxide uses Lightning CSS under the hood, which makes their job a lot faster thanks to Oxide and thanks to Lightning CSS. So this is why it's really cool. Now, the, in a previous version of Tailwind, we had to install Tailwind CSS, obviously, but we also had to install Post CSS and Auto Prefixer. Now, with Oxide, you may have noticed when we did install Tailwind, we just installed the Vite plugin. We did not really install Post CSS or Auto Prefixer, and that's because we don't necessarily need to add it as a separate package, which makes our build a lot more performant. Now, there are certain cases where you might want to use it, but majority of the cases, you don't need to worry about it. As next steps, if you're interested, definitely check out the Tailwind crash course that I have created for you so you can learn Tailwind in depth. And if you're interested, then also check out this other Next.js crash course that I've created to help you level up as a front-end developer. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Bye for now.